So I want to take a moment to go over something that Roxmore has had a couple of questions about. So his first question was basically that he wanted to know how to make melodies like some pretty popular R&B artists. So he kind of name dropped a few people. D'Angelo was one. He's an old school, more of an old school guy. And then Summer Walker was another person who basically uses very traditional, honestly, similar chord progressions to D'Angelo. She's just kind of modernized. She's given her own modernized take to it. And then he made another comment kind of asking specifically about one of the chord progressions that is related to R&B or it kind of gives that R&B vibe, which is the 215. Now, right up front, I'm going to link a couple of different tutorials that I've made in the past that have covered this kind of like in passing and it'll give you very like they'll give you just more practical examples of how I apply this here I'm going to try to go over the technicality of like literally my thought process when I make an r and beat right it gets a little bit more complex than what I'm probably going to show you but this is like the very very like bare bones approach and I think understanding the theory behind it is going to like is like the main thing people need to really understand. So kind of going off that first thing, if you don't have the centerfold drum kit, by the way, let me know if you've gotten that first $7 confirmation for the treehouse. just go ahead and send me like an email and I'll, get, I'll send you the centerfold drum kit for free if you don't already have it. And I'll send you a few more kits because uh, people who are active members get like consistent like access to kits and stuff like that. But the first thing I like to do is just work from any one of these types of chord or like, how do you say, like scale helpers. The one that works the best for me when I'm doing R&B is just the major natural because a lot of like traditional artists or traditional like instrumentalists learn the major scale first. And then that kind of just translates to everything else, right? The major scale is just every other scale that you can think of is just some kind of inversion of the major scale. So even if you were going to like work in the minor, it, it would just be like, it's kind of difficult to explain, but basically, if you've ever heard of like relative minors, that's kind of like where that concept kind of like then blows up. It's like every major has a relative minor and then every major has like its own Aeolian, which is really just minor. And then there's like freaking Phrygian and like just a bunch of other stuff. But the only thing you really need to know is that like if you can do this in major, you can pretty much apply this to anything. And so the way that this goes for me, and I'm going to go ahead and just open up like an FL keys because I think this or let's do flex and then I'll pull out that dark piano because I really like that patch. And then this will kind of be the simplest way that I can demonstrate this for you. I hope you're having a good day, by the way, man. I'm having a great day. I just got my haircut, so I'm, I'm ready to record the beat battle video. So I'm really, really happy about that. I just could not be on camera with like no edge up, bro. It's fucking wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's really this simple right so you literally just boom and uh oh i probably should have told you this but like personally like i know summer walker really likes to work in anything i don't like know summer walker personally but I, i've listened to a lot of her music because she's one of the r&b artists i emulate when i'm making r&b music so that's why i think this works perfectly this is a good tutorial for me to make i've noticed that she really likes those slow temples more more towards like a single time as opposed to modern r&b artists like i've bryson tiller's working in like 140 150 uh, while summer walker does things like that she's more she really does take a more old school approach to R&B, but then she's putting, you know, that new school, definitely that new school spin on it. But she's definitely working a single time. So I would say anything from like nine, 96 to like 110 is like really, really solid. So I'm just going to do like 97. I think uh, maybe like 107. Let's just bring it up by 10. And yeah, so the first thing we're doing here is just and let me just really, really pull back so that I'm not losing anybody here. Right. So these are going to be every note in the scale, right? So we are in the key of, and excuse me, I'm moving my head because this freaking microphone is literally in my face. I need a new stand or arm or whatever because this one is leaning over now. It's all bent and shit, but I'll get a new one probably tomorrow on it or it's like tonight on Amazon. But, you know, just so you understand why I'm like leaning around here. But so these are every, this is going to be every note that's in the major scale, right? Because we pulled in a major scale helper, scale helper. And this bottom note is going to be the root note. And something I really like to do is I will just take this bottom note and I'll just change the color of it so I know that is that's the root note so it's in c major right now right and we could move this up or down using shift and the arrow keys to like literally whatever we want and you can do your own studying about like 
what really sounds good for R&B, for whatever type of R&B you like to do. So something I like to do is I like to work in G major because I've noticed that like a lot of my favorite R&B artists get their best work off in G major. Like I know her is a really good example of someone who performs excellently in G major. Um, there's another like R&B artist. She's a little bit less known. Her name is Olivia Olsen. And she, I don't know if you guys have ever watched the show Adventure Time that used to be like on Cartoon Network, but she plays the character Marceline. And something that a lot of people don't know is she wrote all those songs and the, and she like is like a very like techni technically like trained musician, but she also has like this godly innate ability to just make songs and stuff. And a lot of her best songs on that show and just in general happen to be in G major as well. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to go ahead and go to G major because, you know, I like G major. And so we can work from there. Right. And then, oh, one more thing I should probably explain is that, you know, these are the different, how do you say, chord triads that you can play in this entire scale. Right. So every scale, this is the very simple version of like music theory. Right. <laughs> so every scale has seven chords, seven triad chords. And uh, that's basically just how this goes. It's one for every note. And then you know, they just stack out differently. We can do a, a different, you know, music to, music theory tutorial explaining triads if that's something that you guys really want. But the way this ends up kind of stacking out or coming out is that this is the one chord, this is the two chord, this is the three chord, this is the four chord, this is the five chord, this is the six chord, and this is the seven. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's seven, seven notes, seven chords, right? So going back to what Roxmore said, he wanted to know about R&B chords in general, but then specifically about the two, five, one, because that's like the most, not the most popular, but that's kind of like, that's the one that is like mainstream for producers or kind of like musicians. It's like if a musician is in a bind or they just need to make an R&B song, it's probably like two, five, one. That's like something Tyler, the creator does. Like every time he's making an R&B, not every time, but like a lot of times when he's making an R&B song, it's just like two, five, one. You know what I'm saying? It's just simple. If you're trained in music, like that's just something, you know, it's like two, five, one. Another really good one, which we, if we have time to cover, we definitely will is the two, three, four. It's also very, very good depending on how you stack the notes and kind of like voice everything. It can be very, very good as well. All that being said, let's go ahead and get into like how I would do this and maybe we can talk a little bit about how I would actually structure this out to be an even better kind of sounding R&B song, right? So now we can get back into this dark piano and I can make this chord progression and not seem like I'm doing some kind of freaking wi wizardry, right? So we'll get that two and then one, two, three, four, five, we'll get this five and then we'll get this one right here. Boom. So now I can highlight all this. Uh, that's not what I want to do. Get my pencil tool and we'll drag this over. And there we go. We can, let's see how I want to voice this or how I want to do spacing for this. Let's do, huh. Let's do something like this. Let me bring my keyboard up here and scoot up a little bit. That's a little bit better. Right, let's do something like that. Let's see what this sounds like so far. So this is a two bar loop. That's a little fast. So what I'm gonna do is highlight everything. And while I'm holding my alt key, I'm just gonna stretch this from two bars to four bars. The reason you hold your alt key is so that it will snap to the grid. And so if you're not holding your alt key, it's gonna do, you know, it's, there's no grid and whatever. So edit undo for that with control plus C and we'll just hold alt. So, you know, it snaps the grid nice and easy. Just makes it a lot simpler. And let's see what that's going, what that's sounding like. Cool. So what I like to do is voice my chords a little bit. I kind of like to have all my notes in the chords performing in basically the same range. So what I'm gonna do is take this G, voice it up and see what that sounds like now. Great, right? And so now we can add some bass notes, right? So let's see what sounds good with this. 
Sounds amazing right there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I like that. And I actually like this so much that I'm going to copy paste and then we're going to just stack that with the, that chord progression right there. And I want to add one more chord, so we're just going to freestyle this, right? And now that you have the base of this, this is like what I was talking about, right? You only really need the structure of, how can I say this? You only really need the structure, right? I talked about this a lot in the Southside tutorial, and I think this applies to basically everybody who makes music. They just use like very, right? Like there's not many like people who are just like straight up Mozarts or Beethovens. Like there's very, very few people like that. What a lot of people do is they they take what they've learned in just their life in music and they just use that to outline and then they just kind of use their spirit, their soul, their intuition to kind of fill in the rest. So from here, I have no idea what this next chord is going to be. I don't even know if it's a minor chord, major chord. I have no no clue. I just know I'm working off of a solid foundation, which is that two, five, one chord progression. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, like I feel like we can close that out. This could be like a four chord chord progression. So now I'm trying to figure out what is that last note going to be that's going to kind of like resolve that tension before coming back to that, you know, first chord, which is that two right there. I would like to have my bass notes on the two octave for piano for some reason. A lot of them, this doesn't translate to like every VST, but personally, I found that it works really well in that range. Jesus Christ. There we go. <laughs> so let's see. Let's go ahead and start this over. See what it sounds like. purpose of what we're trying to do i'm like relatively content like i really like that um one thing i'm gonna do is this doesn't match anymore right so i have to do and ah interesting so we can actually keep that and i guess it'll just be some musical tension right there It's just chord voicing, right? And we can actually slow this down a little bit. And now we can add some strum. You always want to do that to make your stuff sound a little bit more natural. Oh, <laughs> make sure you're not highlighting anything because it's only going to strum what's highlighted. Woo! A little too much, though. So 
that's really what it is. And this is going to go for, and I'll, I'll talk about this in every video I do that's, you know, music theory related because it's, it, it's important to drive the point home. And that's why, I don't know if you guys have noticed the, the point of my YouTube channel is that like, I scammed you guys into learning music theory. Like I, I my, one of my first tutorials ever was like saying, I'm not going to teach you music theory. That was like a complete lie because like, there's no basis for this music shit without music theory. Like you can only get so far. Like even niggas like Southside, TM88, the guys you would never Metro Boomin, the guys you would never expect to be using music theory. I promise you to I promise to God. Like I've been in sessions with guys like that. And even like not Southside himself, but I like I've been in a, a session with TM88. These guys are using music theory, bro. Even if they can't say it with their mouth, bro, they're working off of like the same concepts they're using the same concepts every time they're using music theory concepts that's why it's so important and that's the whole point i might meme shit i might make fun of stuff but like almost every single video that's about melodies you're gonna see me talk about music theory and there's a reason for that i even got an email today of a guy that was like thank you for pushing the music theory because it's literally helped me just not even as a producer i've gotten into composition and it's like i never would have got there if it wasn't for music theory so it's like if you're asking how to do any of this stuff, like, you know, R&B stuff, trap stuff, but you're not taking the music theory seriously, there's only like so much that I can actually help you with until you like actually just like say to yourself, all right, like I'm going to take this seriously and I'm going to go learn how to voice chords. I'm going to go learn how to build my own chord progressions. I'm going to learn why it's even important. I'm going to study a little bit about it. I'm going to watch the tutorials where Chewie is explicitly talking about music theory because it's, it's really, really important to being the basis of all your music because what this ends up being is now you just it's really just arranging the chords if you want to do different rearranging the chords and however you want if you really want to do different stuff that's all r&b that's all music really is it's just taking there's only so many things you can do before you start doing complete nonsense like not everything is going to work and that's why that's the whole point of chord, chord progressions i know i'm kind of like beating a dead horse but i kind of have to because it's really really important and so that's kind of it, right? This is like chord progressions that are used by D'Angelo, SZA, Her, Summer Walker, Bryson. So like they're all using this. Ba this one of this is one of the chord progressions they're using. There, there's a bunch more. There's like a gosh. There's a six five four five. There's the two three four. Like I was saying, and this is as simple as just looking up. Once you understand how to do this stuff, it's as simple as just looking up. Okay, what chord progressions are really, really good? And I'll go ahead and drop some links to some videos that I actually have like this whole playlist on YouTube of like videos talking about the chord progressions that are the best for R&B. And that's actually kind of like my reference point when I'm making R&B beats and stuff like that. Okay, so I guess there's a couple more things I want to cover about R&B in general. And I guess we can cover like maybe how to layer your sounds. I think that's really, really important. We can cover that very, very briefly because there's not much to it because R&B is like very minimalistic because if you think about it, what's like the main instrument in R&B, right? It's the vocalist, right? <laughs> so you don't want anything in your beat to be distracting from it. I think one of the best ways I ever saw this was uh, Pale, Pale, however you say his name is P-A-L-E. He's the guy who makes like the, the Drake beats on YouTube and stuff. And he said something that was amazing that like when he told me this, like I started making way better R&B beats and he was like, Stop adding a bunch of shit to your R&B beats, right? It's like literally you need one melody, like maybe, maybe like a second melody, maybe like a like some kind of like texture in there and then just like simple drums, bro. Simple spaced out drums because the artist, it's like the only reason you're even making a beat for an R&B artist is because like they need some kind of structure to like form their voice around that's like all you're doing right you're not the point that's really the point in all of music and if you start thinking about your beats like that your beats will start going crazy but that concept is especially true when you're making like instrumentals for singers there's nothing a singer hates more than overproduced beats the thing that actually singers do is a lot of times they'll just get the melody and write the whole song to the melody then the guys will do the drums then they'll do the overproduction after because like anything to distract the musician from like actually performing is like they're gonna be like turn that shit off or like i don't like this beat like it could be the coldest melody ever it could be the best guitar best piano harps nigga beethoven could have been re resurrected from the grave to play that shit if it's overproduced too many drums too much like hi-hats going on or whatever they're gonna like trust me they're gonna turn it off like i've been in situations like that where it's like how do you not like this beat it's like but then they'll pick some they'll literally pick like 
<laughs> just a guitar strumming. I'm like, bro, I could have just pulled a splice loop if that's what you wanted, bro. And it's like, that's what they want. And it's like, once you understand, you understand why you have to do minimalistic things. Sorry, that was kind of like a very, very deep soapbox, but like understanding this shit is like how you make good R&B beats. So how I would apply that, like, please don't clown me. I'm about to go to the AMLA pad, but it's just to drive the point home, right? From here, I wouldn't do anything super, uh, super complicated, right? I would just be like, okay, it needs like something a little extra, something a little bit to make it a little bit more lush. So I would literally just copy this chord progression, paste it in, bring it up an octave and voice the chords. <laughs> like if you start to hear like a like a some kind of counter melody or harmony on top you know like you start singing to yourself that's very good but do not program that shit because that's actually what the singer is going to do and if you start creating your own counter melody the singer is not going to have anything it's like if they don't like the counter melody you created then they're not going to use the beat right because you didn't leave them any like creative space so that's why like I'm not saying don't do counter melodies and beats in general and like even specifically for R&B, but just based off what I've noticed and based, what off I've heard, based off of what I've heard, unless it's really in the post-production that stuff like that is added to R&B beats. It's just very distracting to the artist. They're going to get the engineer to do that. They're going to get some kind of instrumentalist to do it. You just want to keep the beat simple and just have it be something they can perform on. It's more of providing them a melodic concept. Now, if you're particularly talented and you've gotten to that point where, you know, you can do the counter like counter melody and have it be going crazy, like you can play some guitar on top of it and it's not going to distract from the main melody, bro. All po more power to you. Go ahead and do that. But like if you want to make R&B beats that are going to sell to R&B artists, keep it minimal, bro. Keep it minimal. So this, I know it's not the best, but this concept is perfect. Like I promise you, I could probably post this in my store send it to my list and it would probably get some sales if I sent it to the people who were tagged as R&B artists because it's by the end by the time I'm done with this if I really sit down and produce it it's going to be a hard R&B beat. So the next thing you can do is just add that texture like I was saying. So I'm going to pull something up from Splice really quickly. I'm trying to remember what was one of the last good R&B packs that I actually worked from. Give me just a second here. Hmm. <laughs> just to let you know like how much I actually produce an R&B versus like actual trap which is kind of like my home genre right it's like mostly trap packs here there was one ah is it this one lovesick R&B yes bro okay I don't have the whole thing because I don't have my hard drive plugged in right now but I think this is fine for the purpose of what this is like a more of an afro beat thing but I think this will still work what the heck so we'll drag this into our playlist and we'll just duplicate that over. This is an A minor, so we'll just key it up. So the first thing we'll do is boom, stretch that to four bars, duplicate it over, come back, double click, and then we'll reset the pitch and then we'll start trying to key it to the melody. Even though I know it's G, Oh, this is an A minor, so that doesn't even matter. I literally have to key it by ear because we're in major. So this might not work. It might work because everything, every major has a relative minor. Every minor has a relative major. So let's just see. I know, I don't know what the relative, and I don't have my phone on me. I, I don't keep my phone on me during the day. I don't feel like going to Google, so I'm just going to do it by ear. That's 
simple layer and you see how it's all coming together that's like think about it more like you're producing a whole track don't get don't let your ego get in the way right get splice man two services that i think everybody in the treehouse should have because they are totally worth it i'm never gonna put you guys on trash splice worth it for the ten dollars a month bro it's worth it it's worth it bro <laughs> it's worth it just just get it just fucking get it bro i'm not even gonna explain to you why you should get it just get splice bro vendetta if you've ever heard my song vendetta i haven't broke it down yet but i'm getting ready to break it down splice loop bro some of my biggest pla not not i don't think any of my placements use splice loops interestingly enough but like my own like some a lot of my not a lot but like a few of my viral beats splice loops a lot of my like major productions for artists that aren't like placements, you know, stuff for artists that are getting like, you know, 100,000 streams here, you know, 200,000 streams here, nothing crazy, like in the millions, like say like Young Chief or someone else, Splice Loops, bro. And even in a lot of those beats, I might not be using melodies for the Splice from, from Splice, but I might be using drums from Splice, drum loops, the drum loops from Splice go crazy. Like why program all those hi-hats when Boy Wonder already programmed a really good pattern for you, you know what I'm saying? It's being a producer is being efficient. It's being productive. It's literally in, <laughs> it's a derivative of the word of like the thing that you are, you know what I'm saying? Be productive. Don't let your ego get in the way, man. The stupidest thing you can do in music is let your ego get in the way. Niggas used to tell me like on social media, but like ego is important too. Like you have to have ego. It's like, all right, that's why you're fucking broke, bro. Because ego doesn't matter. And if you have to defend the fact that ego matters, then trust me, like music is not for you. You're probably not going to go very far like in music. If you really love your ego that much, you should like get a career as a fucking IT security tech or something because those niggas have a lot of ego or like go be like a fucking doctor. Go have a career where like ego actually matters because ego is the worst thing to have in music until like niggas don't have ego until they become superstars. And that's like because they have reached success, like success brings everybody's ego out. That's not like what got them there. Like if you go watch Kanye's fucking, um, it's like the genius thing on Netflix, right? He, bro, he, he had like confidence, but like that Kanye ego did not come out until like, he was like very, very popular, bro. Like there's a difference between like being confident and just like being so addicted to your ego that you literally won't like stomach the idea of like receiving assistance or like doing things in a way that is going to be efficient and productive. All that being said, Splice was one of those things. Get Tracklib. That's another really good one. I would say Arcade is useful for R&B beats. I just deleted Arcade because honestly, I'm tapped in with singers now. I can kind of sing now. And I just like, you can find really good uh, like vocal one shots on Splice. So I don't really care much for Arcade anymore. Arcade is really good specifically for the vocals, the vocal like shots and stuff. Like I didn't think it was worth it for the 10. <laughs> it's crazy that it's $10, only $10 a month. And I still didn't think it was worth it. But like, you know, it can be really helpful in situations. I personally don't think it's the most useful thing in the world. Um, but other than that, and you can ask me like, you know, what other subscriptions are going to be really, really valuable. But I, I mean, those are really the two off the top of my head that I can think of. And I pay for both of those. Like, even though I have sponsorship deals with um, Splice and Tracklib, like I still pay for my thing <laughs> every month because it's like, I think they would give me a free deal if I asked. But it's kind of like, I don't know, like, I just want to pay for it. Like, it's really useful. So, you know. Those are two really good things that I think everybody in the treehouse should have. If I ever get, I have the track lib one where you can get 30 days free. So I'll post that in the, in the, uh, sidebar or whatever. And I'll try to get one from splice. I think they have something like very, very special where you can like try it and you'll, you won't get like the full download tokens, but they might give you like 35 or 50 or something. I'll try to post that for you guys too. So you can like get free trials of that stuff and see for yourself, like how useful those things can be. Cause that's another way you can make amazing R and B beats is bro. Just go get an R and B sample, flip it. You already got the R and B beat. So then all you need is the, you don't even have to make the melody. You could just put the layer down, put your little simple drums and you'll be good to go. And I can do an RB tutorial on that too. Cause I think that would be really helpful. But from here, it's just about laying down like simple, 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 simple drums. Rim perks is always like a really, really good move. Really rim perks is going to make beats hit in general. Like my last placement with Young Chief to each his own, it's like a rim perk. And it's like the hardest part of the beat. It's just like the way that rim perk is hitting on the, on the three every single time. But especially in R&B, that rim perk is going to go crazy. So we can just duplicate that over eight times.
So something I've noticed about like the really good R&B songs is like, I mean, 808s are everywhere nowadays. Like I always say this, but the Kelly Uchis SZA song, uh, Fue Mejor, um, it has like the plug, the not the plug, the Zay 808. It's like, there's a whole R&B song, but instead of like a bass guitar, I think they just, in the original, it had a bass guitar. They just took that shit out and put a, a plug 808 instead. So like 808s are everywhere now, but I still would recommend, especially if you're just starting out, Bass samples are going to be your best, like, kind of, like, approach in terms of, like, doing, like, the bass line instead of an 808. You can still go for the 808, especially if you can make it sound classy. I've just noticed that it's, like, a little bit more difficult in that case. So I would say start with bass because it's going to give you that, like, very quality kind of, like, R&B kind of sound that you're looking for. So I really like this full back bass in... um. Repro 5, you can use anything. Like uh, There's a lot of good patches in GMS. There's a lot of good patches in Sakura. Uh, Boo bass. Ugh. But like, you know, it, that's a good option if you know how to mix, which you should if you've watched like any of my tutorials on YouTube. If not, just let me know. I will drop a very specific one for you guys. Just let me know. But yeah, let me just do like a, a very simple bass line really quickly. <laughs> simple chord progression man to answer the question that was asked by rocks more bro it is as simple as the chord progression that you said bro it, it takes practice like you're not gonna get good just like and don't take this the wrong way because like this is something i had to understand through practice bro like but you're not gonna get good just like asking about the technicals forever you know what i'm saying like of course like get someone to show you especially if you're in a situation like this where you're in the, where you're in the tree house like of course get someone to show you like how to do the stuff especially if you want to learn that's a very good thing but the next thing is like putting that shit in practice and then you know get get feedback so everybody has the opportunity to get their beats reviewed um in the treehouse and Roxmore, you did send some beats so we're going to be doing the beat review i'm going to do last week's beat review probably either tonight i know i keep saying that but it's like i've literally been like bro shit has been going like crazy for me right now like in the next video i'm about to update y'all on everything it's actually like it's going crazy for me right now. I'm like grateful as fuck to God. But that's why like I didn't do the beat review on time, which was like kind of like it hit me in the heart a little bit that I couldn't do it. But I was glad that like only two people really submitted so I can really just focus in on them for right now. And hopefully by the time like you guys have seen how the beat reviews go for a couple times, then more people will start submitting. But that's really that next step is then just getting feedback and seeing like how am I doing with my beats? If you want to improve an R&B beat, send them hoes out for feedback just to your friends, families. Girls are the best. Girls are going to give you the most honest honest opinion i always say this girl a girl that is your friend or if you ask your girlfriend to give you an honest to god opinion it might hurt but she's gonna she's gonna tell you the truth right and r&b like you can't go wrong trying to get her to listen to r&b she'll tell you like okay i like it but you know it sounds a little too blank or like it's like oh i really like this part a girl is gonna give you the most honest like because like guys are a little too like guys always think about their own ego when they're giving you feedback it's like oh i don't want to hurt bro so like let me just chill let me just be like it's chill it's cool bro it's tight or like you know it's hard bro or like it's always the same shit with guys but like girls they don't like owe you as much as like a because they're not a man or anything like that it's like i'm gonna just tell them how i feel because like girls don't have the same like emotional response to shit so they don't even like relate to it like that so they're like really good like ways to get feedback um i would never use like trap kicks in an r&b beat but like i think i put this soft kick in this kit like for the literal reason that like I needed access to something that had R&B qualities. I needed access to a kick that had R&B qualities. So I think this will work fine for the purpose of like what we're doing. Again, I don't have my hard drive plugged in right now, unfortunately, but it's okay because the centerfold drum kit has a lot of what I need. And that's why I love this kit. So we can just put this on every, 
every time the uh, bass hits. But I won't do it on the on the one for the se every other bar because like I don't really want that. And I'll probably actually switch up. I'll probably move that bass line off the grid for every other bar, if that makes sense, right? So I'll show you in a second, but it'll end up being more like this. Yeah. So boom, I'm gonna just set up set it up real quick. This texture art that we added already takes care of the hats, which I love again, like bro, textures just make your life so much easier. But like, you know, we could add a, a hi-hat if we wanted to. I would just do something super minimal with the hi-hat in R&B beats in general. You see how that, that hi-hat is not like hitting on the two or, you know, going crazy. That's kind of like the concept of R&B is just very minimal spaced out. Just giving like a landscape for the artist to just, you know, dance on, you know what I'm saying? So I might just do like a simple four step. a little bit of shift to it. Okay, I might get fancy with it now. Like, uh, okay, cool. So let's do something like this. So that is basically like choose R&B in a nutshell, bro. It doesn't really get more complicated than that. It's like from there, it's really just arrangement. And I like I was saying in the in the arrangement tutorial, um, like uh, that applies to trap, hip hop, R&B, neo soul. So that is going to work pretty like it's the same concept in terms of like separating the melody, doing the intro, doing the pre hook and shit like that. So definitely go check that out if you actually want to know how you I would structure this out. But it would literally be the same concept in terms of mixing. It's the same concept, you know, with the especially in terms of signal flow. Signal flow is what makes really simple beats sound amazing. So this plus arrangement plus signal flow gets you a, an R&B beat that's worthy of selling in your store, bro. So I would say this covers the concept pretty nicely. If you still want, so this is specifically for Roxmore, but it could be for anybody else who's like, who was particularly interested in R&B, but just didn't speak up. If you want like stuff that's specific to artists, I will provide you with like actual like information and evidence about like, you know, how, like what types of chord progressions and what types of what types of performances those artists are using on those chord progressions. And I'll do that because I don't think it's useful for me to do, and I, and I might be wrong in this, so please let me know. I don't think it would be the most useful thing for me to do like a specific D'Angelo tutorial, a specific, you know, Summer Walker tutorial. Although this was, I wouldn't call this a Summer Walker tutorial at all, but like the, I, I like a lot of my R&B is based off of like Summer Walker style. Like I can't even lie. It's either Summer Walker or Bryson Tiller when I'm doing stuff in double time. But uh, I don't think that would be helpful because like all of that stuff basically is just like like traditional R&B in terms of like the what it's actually working off of this. And that's what I kind of tried to show in this video. Um But I will like I will still provide those videos of like the different chord progressions that I like to use, like the like I was saying, the six, five, four, five. I think that's what it is. So I have to show the I have to show you the video in order to be sure Um the two, three, four. And then I'll still provide some of the other tutorials where I've done some other chord progressions, especially the two, five, one. That's how the creator video, which has over 100,000 views now is actually just the two, five, one chord progression with like like a, a seven, maybe at the end or a six, maybe at the end or something like that. So, yes. Kind of to summarize all of this. 
just basic melody. It could be like any kind of lead instrument, guitar, piano, whatever, you know, keys, bells, it works. And then some kind of like second melody if you really want to. Pads work really well. Pads could also be the lead instrument. Simple texture, simple drums. Bass line is better than 808 if you're really trying to debate between the two. And then just go really, really solid with your arrangement and get a really, really good mix down. And think, always remember, excuse me, always remember that you're providing a, how can I say this in the best way? You are creating the space that the artist is going to perform in. So you want to not have that space have like, if you almost want to think about it as if you're setting the stage for like a dancer to perform on in front of a crowd, right? Would you put like a bunch of wires on that stage and like risk them tripping? Or like, would you like leave water or like, you know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, have like just a bunch of random obscure objects that get in the way of what is the main performance, right? No, like you'd probably have like decent lighting, not too harsh to make her be sweating all the time, right? Think about that as well. You know, decent lighting, maybe some nice background props, you know what I'm saying? Maybe just a nice carpet on the ground or some kind of nice surface where she can perform on very comfortably without slipping and falling or, you know, you know, really cushion her lands when she goes for like some kind of big move. Think about it like that. And if you think about like making your R&B beats like that, not only will you practice this skill better, but you actually will just make in general better R&B beats. So if you have any specific questions about anything like this, drop them in the comments and I'll respond ASAP. Expect that beat review. If not tonight, latest tomorrow morning. Keep asking questions. Rocks more. I have that ATL tutorial coming, so don't even trip about that. Stay happy, stay healthy, and always be creating. Just make sure it's dope content only. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Peace.